most excellent day to everyone. I am so excited to be here with my feng shui partner, our flock channel partnership, and a new special guest for everybody to meet. We're so excited. Welcome everybody to Anita Feng Shui with Anita and Cheryl. I am the Cheryl and this is the Anita. Yeah, we never know which way to point on here. <laughs> the other one in black today. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, we coordinated in the quantum field. We had no idea. Yeah. Anyways. So I'm, tell us about our guest, Anita. Our guest, our guest today is Paula Meyer. Who, wow, the crowd goes wild. And I had the absolute, you know, I just, I, again, you know, I just love how the universe uh, works and puts you in touch with people mm -hmm. that totally resonates with you. And when you immediately, you know, meet someone for the first time, there's that, that connection or that knowingness or that, you know, that soul recognition. And I really think that that's what it was for me when I first met you, Paula, um, and it was also, um, you just have this amazing energy about you. I'm sure that your aura expands 50 feet. And in that it encompasses this beautiful, soft, gentle, loving energy that you just, you just get sucked into. And, you know, that's how I felt you know, the first time I met you. And I just knew that we were just like, it's almost like you're like kindred sisters or something, right? Uh, so I'm, I'm thrilled that you're, you know, with us here today. And um, we just, you know, we're just going to have a little conversation because we want to introduce our flock to our to flock. Yeah. And, you know, as we know, the FLOC acronym stands for, it can stand for many things, but we like to call it the Fruit Loop and Wind Chime Club, <laughs> because what we've, we have discovered is that a lot of our kindred spirits, you know, we've all been on this earth plane for, you know, many, many years. And um, in this lifetime, for many of us, and I don't know if it's true for you, but we're going to find out. If, um, you know, your spiritual journey or your awakening or your awareness to consciousness, you know, when did that begin and was it um, supported by a loving family, um, you know, or was there a moment that just was like, ah, now, you know, it's kind of like where the light bulb goes off. So, you know, tell us a little bit about that. Paula, like a little bit of background about when you grew up and, you know, maybe where your spiritual journey or awareness awakening began. All right. Well, that's a, a first. No one's ever really asked me that question. So I'm happy to um, share about that. I actually grew up in uh, Denver, Colorado area. That's where I was born and raised. Um, grew up Catholic, although we weren't strict practicing Catholics. We, um, you know, I remember getting uh, Easter dresses and Christmas dresses, and those were the two big holidays where we would go to church, and um, that was it. <laughs> um, my aunt, my, my father's sister was a nun, and she actually lived in Peru for a while, but she always made sure that we, had, we made our first communion, and we were baptized, and all those things. Um, when she was in town, she would take us to, um, you know, catechism classes and stuff like that, so we got a little bit of, of learning in that way. But not nothing really very serious. I mean, my parents weren't big into church every Sunday or anything like that. So I kind of just grew up, you know, not really tied spiritually to anything. And I ended up and I married my first husband in 1988. We moved to Washington State. Um, we were there for mm, a couple months, then moved to Oregon. He got transferred to Oregon. I had my kids there. And um, then we divorced a few years later, and um, and then I met my husband Gary, and he's the one I wrote a book, and th that book is called Great Loss, Greater Love, and um, he was the one who introduced me to spirituality. He has since passed; it was about three years ago that he passed. But I really got into um, into you know he was more into the um, 
I don't want to call it new age woo woo, but that's what a lot of people <laughs> would call it, right? Yep. My family thought it was kind of cuckoo. Um, but I really honestly got into it, and I shared this in my book, is because I just, I, I met him and I thought he was handsome and amazing and I wanted to be his girlfriend. And so I <laughs> started doing what he was doing, right? Just to, <laughs> just to impress him, I guess. And, and that's really kind of how it all started. So he really opened my eyes to, um, you know, the, the power that we have within um, the law of attraction type stuff, um, more, more metaphysical meditation type stuff um, is what he opened my eyes to. So, so, you know, kind of in a roundabout way, that's, that's how I made it there. It wasn't any real big spiritual quest, although it probably was something we agreed on before we came here. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And I just have to say, uh, I've read your book, you know, it's, it's amazing. And, you know, we're going to put some links in there uh, for people to, you know, find your book. And we're going to talk more about, you know, how that journey has kind of transpired into some amazing, really, I mean, you're, you're just doing some amazing work in the world and, and making a difference and raising consciousness. And we just love that. And that's, you know, that's why we do this. We, cause we want to bring awareness to that. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. It's, and it's always fascinating how different, yet how similar many people's backgrounds are that we've spoken with. And you're actually one of the first people that didn't have, um, I won't say an unsupported experience, which a lot of our guests, you know, grew up seeing or visioning or having voices or we're already channeling or being some kind of a medium to some extent. Mm -hmm. um, and that was, well, for one guest, tried to be beaten out of her, literally. <laughs> um, but yours sounds a little bit more in the context of the average family, the average upbringing, which is very cool that it was already in your adult years that the influence was from a man mm -hmm. outside of your, of your inner circle at that point in time. So how did, like, obviously he led and helped you with your book, um, but how else did he influence um, you in, in going down that spiritual journey? Like, did you like share a, a common author or he took you to, you know, seminars or what was that process kind of like for you? I'm just so curious about this. Well, init initially, um, I, when I met him, um, he had a long scar down, down his spine, down the back of his spine. And I, you know, I asked him, you know, what's that all about? And he told me about this amazing healing experience he had had back in the eighties oh. and he had, um, fallen off of a, him and his friend had gone out for the evening. He forgot his keys. And so he was climbing up the second store balcony to his apartment. And as he was getting ready to swing his leg over the, the balcony collapsed, it fell, and he fell to the ground and oh broke my. his back and had to have Harrington rods put in. And so he told me the story about how, how that all happened. He had been, had probably a few months prior to it, I don't know the exact dates, but he had been delving into um, spiritual work and meditation work, healing type stuff. And um, when his accident happened, he just decided that he was, even though they put the rods in his back, he decided that he was going to heal it. He, um, he had, he had a friend of his bring in a, an image of a perfectly healthy spine. And he imagined himself running through the forest every day and smelling the, the trees and the, just the air running through his hair and all of that. He said it was just a really visual thing that he did every day to get healthy again. And he also, even though he was in a, um, a, a jacket, I can't think of the word I'm trying, a vest, like a, a vest to keep his body stable. Um, he went on a road trip. He took a, um, he had a Volkswagen bus and he went on a road trip around um, Colorado, New Mexico, Arizona, met with many healers and, um, and had some really interesting stories around that. And what he shared with me was that over time, he knew that his body was healed. And so he set out to find a surgeon who would remove the rods, which is typically not something that's done with that type of surgery. Wow. It's usually mm -hmm. a lifelong thing. 
And um, he ended up, the accident happened in San Diego, but he was um, raised in um, the Seattle area. And so he moved back to Seattle area, found a, a young orthopedic surgeon at Swedish Hospital that agreed to check it out and see how everything was. And, and um, they went in, removed the rods. They said everything was healed like a perfectly healthy wow. spine. And all of the tendons and things that were in there that the original surgeons had said were like just a mess of spaghetti were all completely healed. So, so I, I mean, I was just, I had never heard anything like that. I mean, no nowadays, now, you know, having been in this work for over 20 years, you hear about miracles like that all the time. But at, at that time, you know, I wasn't, like I said, our, our family wasn't really into anything spiritual or, or miracle type stuff. Um, you know, we had family members that were sick and had passed of different diseases, but nobody mm -hmm. ever was like miraculously healed. And so wow. I was just, I was just surprised by that. And, um, you know, and, and then he started sharing with me what he was doing. He, there were some, um, you know, books that he'd read. Um, the cryon books were part of that. The, the conversations with God books, um, all the, the Celestine prophecy, you know, all of those things that, that were popular kind of back in, you know, back at that time, yeah. um, I started reading and I, I, it just really opened up my mind to, to what possibilities were. And I started to see how, how I had created, um, things in my life based on, you know, the spiritual power that we all have. And, and so for me, it was just, you know, really an eye opening. um, experience and learning uh, of, of just what our potential is you know before wow. I just didn't really thought about it it's just like you know I just lived our life you know went to mm -hmm. elementary school junior high high school went to college and got married had kids you know didn't really ever think about anything super spiritual so it, it was just um it, it was just kind of an eye-opening thing for me it's like wow I didn't even really know this existed what a blessing that yeah. Um, no you got to marry this man and, and, you know, um, be in that kind of enlightened energy early, early on. Right. Uh, like you say, because you know, that we hear about a lot of those miraculous healings now, but maybe not so much 20 or 25 years ago, because people hadn't embraced, um, you know, that mind body, uh, consciousness awareness mm -hmm. kind of thing like it like it has been now and so that kind of leads me you know that maybe um led you and I don't know but we're going to find out <laughs> um to to the work that you did for 20 years like we know that you were um uh, an event coordinator mm -hmm. and for you know, and doing large, massive groups, like 1500 plus people and all over the world. And, and really, you know, how, how did that start for you? And, um, you know, I'm sure that you met some amazing people in your travels, and some of which that, you know, are still your close, close, dear friends today. But, but yeah, I'm curious, how did, how did that opportunity, how did that start for you? Had you, you know, already had an event business? Or did you, you know, what synchronistic event, you know, what synchronicity led you to that? Well, you know, I, I didn't know that the, the um, answer is no, I didn't have event planning experience. Um, although I did for many years prior to moving um, to the Northwest, I worked for a paper company, a large paper company. And um, I put together a few events for them, maybe once a year. Then I went to work for a, a, a um, manufacturing company, trying to think, a uh, fiberglass manufa manufacturing company. And we did a couple events a year for them. So so I, you know, I did a few things here and there, more like conference type, like you'd rent a booth and, you know, you'd set up your products and, and such. And that's kind of what, um, that was kind of the experience that I had. And then I had the opportunity uh, with uh, Gary introduced me to his chiropractor who I ended up working for later. Um, and he was um, uh, an aspiring author at the time. He had written his first book and was, was doing some event work. And so I came in and, and started helping with that. And then over time, as, as his audience grew and his work grew and he wrote some more books, um, then we started to 
do our own events. So, so it kind of went from, I was just booking with different um, other event organizers that would hire him to speak. And then we slowly moved into doing, um, producing our own events. So I really got a great um, learning experience, you know, from the whole way, you know, so, so, you know, I got to see how other organizers did the events when they hired him. And so I was able to take that learning into what to do once we started moving to hosting our own events. So mm, it, it was wow. a really great learning experience. Um, went all over the world. Um, by the time I left, I had, you know, I, I think I'd been to like 20 countries. And, wow. and I, the one thing that, uh, that really, once I left that job and went on my year of travel, after, um, after my husband died, that was the kind of the impetus of really getting present with places that you go, because we went to so many amazing places while I was um, the event director for that company. And a lot of times, you know, maybe I'd get a half a day to check it out, or maybe a day if I was lucky, or if I took a few extra vacation days. But, um, you know, I was never really able to be present and just really get into a place and really um, get to know it. And so when I went on my year of travel, which I write about in my book, that's, that's what my intention was, was to really experience places that I went. And I did, I met some amazing people along the way. Um, many of them still good friends. Uh, when I went on my year of travel, I had several offers to stay at different places and, and I was just loved and taken care of. And it was, mm. it was an amazing experience. So I, I learned a lot and um, uh, really grew a lot emotionally and, and spiritually. And, and the other thing I learned too was that, um, you know, we have to take care of ourselves. And all of that time, especially the last probably four years when, when Gary was diagnosed to when he passed, those last few years of, of working was, I spent so much time taking care of him or doing my job and I didn't take care of myself. And I think a lot of times, um, we find that we we kind of negate our own needs, thinking that we're doing good for other people. Um, because in this line of work we were, we were doing amazing, um, putting on amazing events for people to help them um, with their, their spiritual growth or emotional growth. Um, but, but we didn't always take care of ourselves in the process. Mm -hmm. and, and I think sometimes we think that, you know, God's gonna take care of us if we're taking care of other people. But honestly, you know, it's not God's responsibility to take care of us, it's our own. And, and so it was a, a big learning process too of, of, you know, putting myself first and, and, and not feeling guilty about that. Yeah. Good for you. Like that is, that is an, a massive awareness. And a lot of people don't even, don't get to that point until they're in crises. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and I ended up in crises is what happened because I on my um, 55th birthday, I ended up in the ER having my appendix taken out. And I, I know, you know, it's funny too, because, you know, we think we know, you know, we, I've been doing this work for so long. I know my thoughts create my reality. I know that um, the emotions in my body are what create illness and disease, but I didn't really get it. <laughs> I mean, personally, I got it for other people. And, uh, you know, I just ignored a lot of stuff signs and things that I was getting along the way. And so sometimes that's the, the, the best way that we learn about, um, about our power and about um, how reality really is created. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when I started looking into things, like I'm a big fan of Louise Hay and, um, you know, all the emotional issues around disease and yeah. illness. And the thing I found out about appendicitis was that it's a fear of flow. It's a fear of life. And, um, now looking back on it, I can see that, that I was, you know, I was just stuffing everything down. My body was hanging on to it, protecting me from it. Um, and I was fearful of what was to come. And, you know, I, I knew that Gary was very sick. Um, early on, we, you know, were hopeful that he would be okay. But as time went by, it was, you know, became glaringly apparent that he was not going to survive. And, and, so we, we just, you know, a lot of times what we do is we just stuff that and, um, mm -hmm. and, and we just keep moving. We keep doing what we know how to do 
mm-hmm. avoiding that kind of stuff. And our body is, is a, our best friend. It takes care of us, but it can only take so much, you know, and, and um, my body was like, okay, I've protected you all this time for all this fear around life and flow and everything, but I got to flow too. I got to let this go. And so it yeah. let, mm-hmm. let it go. And I lost my appendix. Right. And, um, but I think that's a, that's something that, that most of us, I think, have to kind of be hit over the head Mm -hmm. before we like have the epiphany that, oh, (laughs) Mm -hmm. I I actually am in control of my life. (laughs) Yeah. And I, I know that, you know, Gary continues to guide you, Paula, from the other side in, in spirit, because we know that, you know, energy cannot be destroyed. It only changes form. And, uh, again, I, you know, I love, loved your book and, um, also that you have created a Oracle card deck. Um, and again, with some of Gary's images and some of the things that he journaled, uh, would you want to maybe do, let's, do you want to do a card for us today for everyone? Sure. Sure. I'll just, so it's, it's got the same name as my book. It's great loss, great love. And and really just quickly how this kind of came about, it was actually when I was writing the book, I had gone um, back home. For most of COVID, I ended up in Colorado because I'd been traveling and then I was visiting family in Colorado and I got sidelined here while everything started shutting down. So I started writing my book in Colorado and I was able to go back home for a couple of weeks in June of 2020. And I needed to do some research, you know, for the book, like medical stuff in each chapter opens up with a quote from his journal. And I, this is the journal that he, that I gave this to him that he, some of the quotes are here. And I took this on my year of travel. And so I pulled some quotes out of that journal, but when I went home, I looked in some of his other, other journals to find quotes. And I happened to cross a bunch of slides, you know, those old slide um, projector film things that you put in the little oh, yeah. round thing. <laughs> And it, I, I knew that he used to like to do um, nature photography before I even met him. So I found all these cool um, images and I thought, you know, why don't I make a card deck? Cause I had just been, I had started working with Sunny Don Johnson and she used card decks a lot. Um, Colette Baron reed had gone to one of her events. She used, uses card decks quite a bit. Cryon has some card decks. And, and so I was intrigued by those. And I thought, well, this will be fun. It, it's not, it's not really about it's just a a happy image. It's either his image or one of mine from my year of travel. And then the quotes are either mine quotes or his quotes. And and they're really geared to just help, um, you know, anybody who's going through any kind of loss, you know, there'll be days when you just feel crummy, depressed. And the idea is just pull one of these cards, put it on your fridge, um, feel what it, there's a little short little exercise to go through. And, and it's just about getting the feeling of that image and that those words. And then, um, feeling what it feels like to, you know, to have that elevated feeling. And then during the day, when you start spiraling down again, you can go back and relook at it. And it's just, it's just Mm. just a fun way. So, so I'll, yeah, I'll pull a, um, I'll pull a card for this group and, and then I'll share it with you. Hopefully I'll remember where it was taken and who the quote was from. (laughs) Um, Gary will help you. I do, I do one every day. And, you know, it's so interesting because you know, just like an Oracle card deck, um, it, it's just so amazing. Like, I'll, you know, what do I need to know today is usually what I'm asking mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I'll get something that makes sense. And I, I use this along with some other card decks um, on, on my daily thing, but here's, here's what I pulled for it. This is actually a picture that Gary took. So this is an image of a waterfall that, um, that Gary took. I don't know exactly where, but um, the, the quote is, my body works best when it's fully hydrated, drink water every day and lots of it. And that's one of my quotes because Gary always used to tell me all the time, you know, I'd say, I, I have a headache. Are you drinking enough water? Mm-hmm. I feel um, I feel tired and lethargic. Are you drinking enough water? So <laughs> <laughs> this is Gary telling me drinking enough water. But I also wanted to just, I, I want to show you, share some kind of other cool ones that are just so you can kind of, kind of get a feel. This is a picture of a, oh. a frog that I took when my mom and I were leaving for the, my first road trip um, in my, during that year of travel. And it was just, he was just sitting in my yard. He let me pick him, him up and <laughs> I took this picture and I, I put the quote 
my quote, I trust my intuition. Because that's what I've been working on all this time is I trust my intuition. I found this card from, um, this is a picture that Gary took. An owl is one of my um, totems. And Gary used to buy me owls all the time. Um, in fact, when he passed, he, he used to love to shop on um, eBay. And there was an owl, a little, this cute little owl carving that he had in his um, checkout. Thing that he hadn't finished purchasing and so I bought it for myself from him so anyway I choose wisely every day for my highest good that's mm. nice and then beautiful another one of the, the signs that um hummingbirds dragonflies and herons are things that I see a lot from him and I took this walk around the lake in Seattle one day and this heron was just sitting there waiting for me just watching mm. and yeah. so I loved it my loved one lives on in my heart and is just a thought away. So mm, it's just a fun, a fun card deck to just kind of get your vibe up, you know, get your energy back up, you know, and, and find the good in the day. And that's one of my nice. biggest thing that I always like to tell everybody, no matter what kind of tragedy or loss, there's always something good in it. There's always a gift. And our, our um, mission is to find that gift that helps us move through the loss. Yeah. Nice. So on that note, I, I have to ask, what's, what's your fun? Like what Anita's favorite term, what gets you <laughs> juiced? Well, I'm stealing it. <laughs> I, I love, um, I love traveling and, you know, COVID has kind of put a dent in that for me, <laughs> but, um, but when, when we did, we, I recently co-produced an event in Sedona, um, first weekend in June and I had, I had made um, reservations to fly but then I, then I thought you know I'm not on any kind of time schedule I'm going to drive and so nice. I decided to, instead of you know just taking a week's time for the event I took two weeks and I drove from Denver to um, Moab Utah checked out Arches National Park and then um, drove down to Sedona and and then on the way back I took a long you know a couple days to just check out sites I love being able to be on the road and just being able to pull over when you see a cool sign, like there was this, a sign for um, these ruins, Native American ruins somewhere in Arizona, I can't remember where, but um, they were 800 year old above ground, you know, not, not like Mesa Verde, but um, it's just amazing. And I love being able to just pull off, go check it out um, and, and just really connect with, with nature and that kind of thing. So that's my favorite thing is just, Traveling. Freedom. I never Freedom. thought I'd be a road trip kind of person. I always thought I'd, I'd prefer flying and such, but I've actually really enjoyed just getting on the road, getting in a car and um, not being on any kind of timetable and mm. just seeing what I want to see and not, not having to, um, you know, not having a care in the world, basically. <laughs> Beautiful. That's what I, love. I love traveling. And, and so you said you were at an event. So now let's, uh, let's tell everybody what you're currently doing. Mm -hmm. um, and um, yeah, because I know you're still involved in some events. And, and of course, as many people had to pivot to <laughs> online events, I know you did that as well. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, using your amazing uh, talents and skills that you honed over 20 years. Um, tell us, you know, what's coming up for Paula and GP yeah. uh, event works. And, you know, again, we're going to let everybody know where they can find you, mm -hmm. how they can purchase your book, how they can purchase your cards, all of that. But what's, what does the future look like? Paula? Well, I, I just, um, I recently uh, created a new website and it's, it's based on the book. So it's called great loss, greater love.com. That's the website. So you can find my book, my cards and the different events that I'm doing on there. And like you said, I did have to pivot, you know, when 2020 hit, I had probably a handful of events, live events scheduled that we had to either postpone, cancel or go virtual. And that was a whole learning curve too. I mean, mm -hmm. a virtual event is very similar to running a live event. It's just obviously the venue's different, right? You have a virtual venue as opposed to a, a live venue. Um, but, but then you've also got, how do I engage with people when you're not face to face? So, um, I've attended some amazing, um, events, virtual events, watching other speakers create, um, connection online. And I think that's been a really, a really amazing thing to see happen. 
Um, for me, I've got, um, actually on Saturday, I have a free event that I'm doing. It's a, a grief workshop for women. And it's not a sad, you know, grieving kind of thing where actually I'm actually sharing how to, you know, move through and beyond and, and, and find um, help and joy and purpose um, through loss, any kind of loss. It doesn't have to be death, but um, it's for women. It, it's this Saturday from nine, nine to noon Pacific. And what are the dates, Paul? It's this Saturday, July 10th. And it'll be 9 a.m. to noon Pacific. And um, like I said, it's a free event. Um, you can find it on my my uh, website and also on my Facebook page. My Facebook page is Great Loss, Greater Love. And um, yeah, so it's just, you know, a quick registration process to get in. I'll be sending the Zoom links out um, probably Friday. And just, you know, really going through some, um, I have a, a process that um, it's called Blossom from Loss. And it's part of the Bloom to Bloom series that, that I've put together. And so this one will go through like the, there's four steps in the, in the Bloom to Bloom process that I created and the Blossom from Loss um, will cover like the first two. So we'll go through those and, and just get some really good basic ideas on how to um, start moving forward, you know, through any kind of loss, you know. Um, and it's also about, you know, creating connections because, mm -hmm. You know, when we're going through any kind of loss, we can't do it by ourselves. Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes we think yeah. we can. I thought I could do it by myself. But, but the thing is, is you need, um, you need support, you need guidance, you need connection, you need love and compassion from other people to help um, move through, you know. We, you know, we need each other to help us find um, purpose again and to bring joy back in. And, um, yeah, so, so that's what I'm doing um, this Saturday. And then I've also created a 12 week course around my book and um, that the first one is uh, that's kicking off July 29th. And so it's a 12 week course where we actually read the book together. We do the activities together. My book has each chapter has an activity to kind of take you through um, some ideas around um, moving through and beyond loss. And, um, yeah. So, so those are a couple of things I've got going on. And they're both virtual then by the sounds of yes. things. Yeah. Yeah. And then I do have, you know, down the road, um, my friend and I are working to put together um, sacred tours. So once travel starts to open up again, our goal is to, you know, take small groups to cool places like, um, like uh, Tulum or Glastonbury or, or Peru or um, on a Magdalene trip in Italy. You know, we want to do small spiritual sacred tours is kind of what we want to do. So we're planning to do our first one in um, probably not till 2023, um, but that's in the works. And, uh, and then, you know, I've got a few other events in 2022, like I mentioned, you know, we'll be doing a power event with Lynn McTaggart in Sedona in June, 2022. Um, so excited about that as well. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Excellent. Excellent. Oh, wow. That was fantastic. Um, Paula, I, we, I shouldn't say I, we so appreciate you taking time out of your schedule um, yes. to have this conversation with us. It is refreshing. Um, and I think it's important to share people's basis and things that they've gone through, because quite often mm -hmm. we, we see them on social media or something along those lines and think, man, they've got the easiest life or they've got, right. So we make a judgment and we know nothing right. of what they've gone through. So I appreciate your candidness and your willingness to be so authentic with us and those that are watching. Well, thank yeah, you. I no, appreciate absolutely. It. And, and I just love to Paula, how um, you have empowered me um, with your journey of loss and, you know, inspire, you, you know, and just inspire so many people that, yeah. um, you know, when you lose someone, you know, particularly like in your case, your, your beloved, your spouse, your, your, your soulmate, um, you know, for a lot of people, it's hard to come out of that. And I mean, you've, you've, you've come out of that with this amazing strength and, and fortitude and, this 
you know, I, I just see you glowing more than um, you already are. And, you know, what a beautiful gift, you know, what a beautiful gift that you are and a beautiful gift that Gary, um, you know, to be able to spark that awakening inside you. And he continues to journey alongside you every day. So, so again, from, from my heart, from our heart to yours, uh, we love you. We bless you. And thank you for, for spending and sharing your time with us today. Thank you so much for having me. I enjoyed spending time with you ladies. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you.